a very common question that we get asked is, or you know, a very common question I see a lot is, can we build muscle and can we burn fat simultaneously, right? And the short answer is yes, you definitely can. And that's pretty much what we did here with Dylan, right? He was sitting around the same weight here, uh, but the way I like to design programs is, you know, really prioritize specific muscle groups, those being lateral delts. So I'm gonna do some drawings here, but internet is being a bit slow. Um, so essentially, lateral delts, lats, upper chest, and you know your quad sweep, your vastus lateralis. So those are the key points that I like to really place emphasis on. Now, if you're part of the evolution program, I'm sure you can agree that you see a lot of back volume in your program. Um, Jared, I'm sure you can share your experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, I, I, I seem to grow in my shoulders and back straight away. Yeah, I, I just I have trouble with my chest. Yeah, uh, I see. My back it grows quick. Yeah, especially my shoulders. They're very overpowering. Yeah. Okay, cool. So based on the program that we designed, right, we'll obviously take that into account and delegate more volume in those specified regions, because essentially everybody's goal is to just build broad shoulders, small waist, right? And we can kind of create that illusion by manipulating training program. Like I get a lot of people come up to me and say, man, your proportions are so nice. Um, and it's a very common misconception that it's genetical, right? When I was smaller, when I was younger, uh, keep in mind, my waist is like 26, 28 inches. Um, my shoulders were narrower than my waist, right? Which is crazy when your waist is like 26 or 28 inches. Um, so just over the years of like eight to 10 years of training, you know, one or two years enhanced, um, like I, I really focus, especially the last two or three years, like volume delegation is so, so important, right? If you're, you know, people, people always ask like, what is the best split? But this is the wrong question to ask because you can do a push pull legs, but like in that push session, you might have one, you know, let's just say, for example, you might have five chest exercises and one front delt exercise and maybe, you know, one tricep exercise. You know, if you do that over a compounding amount of months or years, you're going to have a really distorted or weirdly shaped physical composition, right? Which is not exactly what you want. Be very particular on one, how much volume can you recover from? So that comes in with nutrition as well. And two, what areas do you want, do you want to prioritize, right? Does that make sense to everyone? Everybody following along? Yeah. Sweet. I'll kind of explain the process, right? So it comes down to really managing two things, macro management and again, volume management, as I've discussed. As you drop your calories, you need to increase your volume. And this is a common, like a very common problem that people do, right? So they think that they need to lose weight really fast. So they'll drop their calories by like a thousand to 1500, right? Anything like that, or maybe even like 700, right? That's like the first thing they would do. Has anybody in here during a cutting phase, is that what they did in the past? I'd love to. Yeah, Quentin's like, yes. <laughs> For me, one of the things that I did was uh, more so to cleanse my gut, but I did a water fast and I took it like to extreme because mm. I like to do things to the extreme. And then right after my water fast, I like transitioned into food slowly. So I slowly went into juices and then did a whole juice fast for another week. So basically two weeks with no food. And I guess at that point, I've really screwed up my metabolism. And uh, I did some research and they said that you have to slowly, you know, incorporate food again. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do that. So right away, I like I went from like 210 pounds all the way down to 180 mm -hmm. and then jumped back up during COVID to like 245 yeah. pounds, whatever that is in cubes. Yeah. So like really shot back up really quickly. And then right after that, kind of bulked too heavy. So I st stayed at that weight, 245 pounds, and was just wasn't able to cut it. Yeah. Everything was cut off like in, in society, like gyms weren't open, yeah. grocery stores were really hard to get access to. So it was just really hard to be on a diet when only thing is open is McDonald's. <laughs> so just being at 200, 245 pounds. Yeah. And then um, after that, I was like, fuck it. Let's just do another water fast. Like, you know, it oh, worked. No. I was able to shred the weight. And then I just didn't incorporate food properly. So then ended up doing it again and then losing a lot of weight and then shooting back up again. And yeah. I've just been stuck at like this plateau of like 200 pounds now. Yeah. So it's, that's been a problem. <laughs> We're headed towards the right direction now, Quentin. So don't worry. But that's typically what people do, right? You follow these like shake diets, you lose a lot of weight. And because of that, you think the only way to continue to see results is following a fucking shake diet. Right. And yes, although you'll lose a lot of weight really fast, you'll bounce back right up, as Quinton said, and then you'll be like, oh, shit, 
what do I do now? Let me just go and, back. And after there. that, it becomes even harder to cut. Yes. Because exactly, of that. Exactly. Even right. harder. Exactly. So it's like now you're in this repetitive cycle of just <laughs> feeling like shit and not seeing results. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's why I'm a big believer of like what I aim for and what I get my clients to really aim for, depending on your body composition, is anywhere from 0 0.5 grams all the way up to maybe two kilos. Like two kilos is for more of the bigger guys and, you know, people with like, 40, 30% body fat, maybe not 40, but like 30, 35, right? That's kind of the goal. But for most people, depending on your body fat levels, you know, 500 grams is a good amount. I think a lot of people think, oh man, I'm losing, you know, like this week I only lost 200, 300 grams. That sucks. I'm like, no, but it's actually great. Firstly, look at your body composition and it really does vary from, from person to person. Does, does anybody else want to share their experience? I saw a couple hands up. Oh man, I used to do it like, like before I joined the uh, group, like when I was like, I'm 24. So when I was 18, um, I lost most, most of the weight because I used to be obese, mm. but I was eating like around like 1,300 calories a day. A thousand so I was eating boiled, wow. like, like I was just eating boiled chicken yeah. for lunch and dinner oh, and I was man. having no breakfast. So, and I got, it got to a point where like, I was like, why am I not losing like weight? And why do I feel like, you know, shit. depressed and all that yeah. shit? You know what I mean? And I realized that it kind of like messed up my metabolism and, and your a hormones. lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. And how are you finding everything so far? How many weeks are we in the program now? So now, uh, me, um, it's my first, first it's, like, it's week, been right? like a month and like a week. Yeah. Yeah. And I've lost, um, like around like two kilos. Nice. Nice. It feels good, man. And I'm, I don't feel like hungry like most of the time good because i'm eating a lot how many good how many calories are real 2432 yeah. nice nice did did naz explain why we said we started you there yeah uh, i i like at the start i was like man oh, oh that's a lot yeah. you know, he was like i think Quentin said the same thing <laughs> yeah, yeah and then he, he was like oh yeah um because like once you what what where like you, the, we have more room to work with mm -hmm. later on later mm -hmm. on the program Exactly. And I like, it makes so much sense. Like, cause what if I just go to like 1,800 calories yeah. and I'm stuck at a point where I have to eat less than that. And that's exactly. not really, exactly. Yeah. And like being in a deficit for a long time, which a lot of the guys do when they come in here, I've also got a couple of people from physique factory that's joined in, you know, they've been eating 1200 calories for a long time. So the whole first two weeks, you know, what we like to do is establish baselines and depending on how your body responds, go from there, either transitioning into a cutting phase or transitioning into a maintenance period, right? And the purpose of the maintenance phase is, is just to give your body a bit of a break to keep it very simple. When you're in a de deficit for so long, you know, you can call it a meta metabolic adaptation. Your body just struggles to lose more weight. So you kind of have to give it a bit of a break. It's kind of like training, right? If you're training every single day, very, very hard, you're not going to see growth if you, unless you, you know, let your body take a bit of a reset, recover. Like the only way to really lose body, like get absolutely lean anywhere from sub 10 to maybe 12 is if you do it gradually, because what will happen is if you drop this fast, you're going to get stuck here and you're going to want to shoot back right up. This guy, you know, he might be traveling along and it might take him longer to get here, but we're able to go further down. There's other methods where you can go shoot back up to maintenance. And during this period, actually, Arthur, you can add to this because you're eating fried chicken every day <laughs> and you're still lean um, after your dieting phase. You know, once you're here and you shoot back up to your maintenance, you can sustain being a lot leaner and a lot lower body fat. And it takes time. Like it really does take time to do it properly. We can get shit done in 12 weeks. No worries. We can get shit done in six or eight weeks. I've done it before. I've lost like eight kilos in six weeks, but my mental health, I did not bounce back well. Like I had a massive eating disorder for a long time, right? Until like recently, which is what I want to prevent for everyone that works with us, right? And even just people that watch me. That's why, you know, I would say aim for 500 grams to a kilo per week, just depending on your body fat composition. Another problem is... People, you know, going too low for too long. You know, you don't want to be too low for too long because then like the same thing happens, right? Now in this period is, it's kind of what we did for Arthur, James, and a few other clients, you know, we'll introduce like refeed days or high carb versus low carb days just to regulate your energy. But if you're again here for too long, protocols are not managed. It's pretty much almost as bad as, but just like going straight down, but you'll get there a little bit longer. So what happens, right? When we're, when our, when calories are dropped for either too fast or too low for too long. Energy and performance just decreases, right? It just, it just plummets. This is how building muscle works. And I'm sure everybody here has like some form of understanding. And again, we're going to keep it very simple. So our body is a, an adaptive mechanism, right? We need stimulus for it to grow. So this is our muscle fiber for it to grow. We need to, yeah. So when you go to the gym, it creates those little micro tears, right? Damages the muscle 
and then you use food and you use sleep to repair this. Now, when you do that, the muscle will grow bigger. However, if you don't provide it the stimulus it needs, it's not going to grow. And I'm going to dive into that in a little bit. So we hear this term of progressive overload all the time, right? We need to do progressive overload or progressively overload in order to create bigger tissue, right? And then add, combine that with sleep and rest and food. That's how we grow. Volume is calculated through sets, weights, and reps. Okay. Now, every time you add volume, so this is kind of like what your muscle will look like. If you do 2,300 kilos as a total, just an example, you know, and then the next week you do 3,000 and the next week you do 4,000, right? Obviously the rate of growth is not as dramatic, but just to kind of give you guys a visual representation, right? Now, when you have low calories, as everybody experienced here, your calorie, your, your energy is very low, right? Which makes training more difficult. It makes performance, again, it, it starts to deplete and it makes sustaining your total volume more difficult. So let's say you're training, your training program, right? You're following this program and total accumulated volume, let's just say, for example, just a random number, 4,000 kilos, okay? Because your, perform, your energy's down, your performance goes down, what happens? Your, your total volume drops, right? So when your total drop volume drops, there's no reason for your body to hold the tissue. And as you get weaker and weaker, it starts to get lower and lower. So essentially your goal when you're dieting is to maintain at the very least whatever stimulus it is. When you're in deficits, our goal is to maintain volume or even increase volume. And how do we do that, right? There's a few different ways. So firstly, how do we avoid this, right? High carb days, which is what Arthur has experienced. Quinton, you're not that deep into it yet. Later down the track, for some of the guys that I've worked with as a super lean, we need to implement high carb days, right? especially if you're a tradie as well, right? Um, anything physically demanding or even just anything that needs a lot of mental clarity, focus, we need to be able to manipulate carb days in order for you to stay in a deficit for a long time. Right. You, when you're also low in energy, low in calories, you're going to need more sleep to compensate. Right. So the, you guys probably noticed the whole act is like a balancing thing. Like you really you take away one thing, you add one thing. Right. But where people go wrong is they don't know how many how much to take away or how much to add. And the only way to really do that is to accumulate more and more data. Training periodization. This is a big one, which I'll explain now. So for me personally and all my clients, we do about a 12 week. This, this should be a photo here, but it's around 12 weeks. Right. Every training block is about 12 weeks, depending on your circumstances and a few other variables, right? But generally speaking, 12 weeks. Within the 12 weeks, we have three different training phases. Now, each training phase is five, four, and three weeks long, right? So we're going to call it phase one, two, and three. And as your phases increase, total difficulty and total volume also increases. And this is the exact reason why. So as your calories deplete, we want to make sure that our total volume increases, but due to just adaptation, progress will start to slow down towards the near end of week five. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, Jared, like, are you starting to yeah. slow down? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I'm about to start phase two on Monday, I think. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I was talking to Nas, he was saying he was going to make up everything. Exactly. But right. yeah, it's, I was, I don't know, I was, like I was starting to progress heaps with my weight but then i feel like it's slow down like i was slowing down like yeah. I, I sort of pulled back a bit just to focus on the tempo and yes that's that's another you know? thing which we'll dive so, into yeah. in a different I've pulled, I've pulled back but i've sort of tried to just focus on how many reps i got last week and try and yes got more reps so there's still volume exactly and that's exactly what i was going to talk about next but that's exact reason like week five around this tail end you will start to go down so what do we do we manipulate it. We add more, either more sets, anything to provide more stimulus. And then towards here as well, Jared, you will experience that you will also plateau towards the tail end, right? Yeah. So yeah. the final phase is phase three. And this is when I typically do three to four sets and a lot of drop sets, right? Just to, again, find ways to implement, to increase total volume. Now for some people, right? Because you might be in a time constraint like you, Quinton, you know, you're busy with your job. You can't just keep adding more and more and more and more sets. Like, you know, I'm in the gym for four hours, right? So what we might do is like do more drop sets, maybe add some other movements or maybe even shorter training blocks. It just, it just really, really depends. But for some people, if you can only train 45 minutes a day, you know, there's more efficient ways 
to do things. So it really, really depends on your living circumstances and your commitments. And as you'll notice, as you said, Jared, additional sets, drop sets, etc. right? 